Finding my grandmother wasn't easy. I didn't have a lot of people I could ask. My dad has several siblings, but he was the oldest and the only one with a different mother. My grandfather ain't alive anymore, so I couldn't go to him. The only option I could think of was to ask other Cherokee Indians if they'd any idea where she was. So I left the mountain in search of her. Now, we can leave the mountain temporarily. As I said before, we'd been on vacations, but there's that extra shadow. I ain't ever noticed it until now because I was just a kid before. I had no interest in my shadow. But sure enough, once I left town, there it was. A shadow ain't always present, of course. At least not that you can see. But if the light hits you just right, you'll see it. I'd driven up to Cherokee. It might sound a bit too obvious that Cherokee live in Cherokee, but it's a small town on reservation land. There's a sort of stereotype that natives are wise. Like they sit around wearing feathers and smoking a peace pipe, sharing allegorical tales that'll set you right better than any doctor ever could. But the truth is that they're flawed people like the rest of us. Although, maybe not as bad as the folks on the mountain. However, some ain't strayed from who they are. They stuck to tradition and ain't let the modern world muddy their minds. My grandmother's name is Liza. I at least knew that. Her father was Cherokee, and her mother was some sort of European, I guess. I didn't have much to go off. I'd asked maybe a hundred natives if they knew her. Most didn't. Some saw my extra shadow and beat feet. But I'd finally stumbled upon a man who did. He was older probably close to her age. He looked like a traditionalist, based on how he was dressed and looked. He was sitting on a park bench. He spoke to me first, asked me if I lived on my own. I reckon that would be an odd way to start a conversation if you didn't know the truth about the mountain. No, I live with my parents, I said. I know Dad ain't alive anymore but excluding him from the household don't feel right yet. I know a woman who can get rid of that extra shadow. Sounds like the lady I'm looking for. What's her name? Liza. He showed me on a map where she was located. She was outside of town, living the woods in some old house. He told me to be careful that she wasn't too fond of unexpected visitors. I thanked him and started heading back to my truck. Tell your grandmother I said hello. I turned around to ask him how he knew who I was, and he'd already started walking off in the other direction. I still ain't sure how he knew. The woods were thick, and I'd almost missed the road to her house. It was a narrow dirt road that ran off a separate dirt road. It was long and winding, and I didn't see any signs or a mailbox on my way up. I finally pulled up to a single-story cabin with a large front porch. Smoke was coming out of the chimney. I got out of the truck quietly. I didn't slam the door on the old Ford like I usually do. Then I felt something jab into my upper back. Don't move. It was a man's voice. He had a gun on me. I raised my arms above my head. Uh, I don't mean no trouble, I said. I'm looking for Liza. He pushed the gun harder into my back. What's your business with Liza? He asked. Suddenly, the cabin door opened and an older woman stepped onto the porch. She wasn't hunched over and frail like Sarah. She looked younger and much healthier. Her hair was long but tied up, and she had native jewelry on. But her clothes were regular, 
a western shirt and jeans. Let him go. The man eased the barrel off my back. Can I help you? The woman asked. You Liza? I am? I'm your grandson. She was a bit hesitant at first, but Liza soon recognized features on my face that she remembered from my grandfather's. She invited me inside. And this is Diwali, she said, introducing me to a native man who had been holding the gun on me. He's a cousin. Diwali nodded. He appeared to be a little older than me and looked like a Cherokee warrior in modern clothes. He had a braided mohawk and tribal tattoos on his arms. He was lean but looked powerful, the type you didn't want to hold eye contact with too long. I reckon Diwali means warrior or something cool like that, huh? I asked. It means bull, Diwali replied. Straight-faced. Oh. Neat. We call him Wally, Liza added. And what did your daddy name you? I think my mom and him figured it out together. Mason. That's the name of a stone worker. Well, I didn't pick it. I suppose it's better than Bull. Sorry, Wally. Wally shrugged and continued carving on a piece of wood with a pocket knife. So, how is your father? Liza asked. I looked at the floor, trying to summon up the strength to say just two words. He's dead. Liza didn't respond immediately. She just sat there looking disappointed more than pained. How'd he die? She finally asked. He got killed inside the mountain. I'm sorry. It was strange. His mother apologizing to me. But I reckon she never really knew him. I hear you can get rid of this extra shadow, I said trying to change the subject. It's already gone. What? Walk over to that lamp. Look for yourself. I got up and waved my hand over the lamp. Only one shadow. My own. How'd you get rid of it? Liza pointed to the various dream catchers hanging around the house. I thought those were just decorations, I said. The ones you buy in some gift shop might be. They're not blessed. They often aren't even made with tribal hands. But these are genuine. But why do they get rid of the shadows? Dream catchers were made to protect people from nightmares. The mare? Liza nodded. Yep. So is the shadow gone completely? Am I free? The dream catchers don't catch anything, despite what the name would have you believe. They're more of a repellent. Then what do I do when I leave? Liza reached into a drawer and handed me a leather string with a small dream catcher hanging from it. Wear this around your neck, she said. I put it on and couldn't help but grin. It's that easy? Liza leaned back in her seat and crossed her legs. Anything else? I took a deep breath and decided to come clean. My mom's brother wants to become a mayor. He's taken my mom and said he won't let me see her unless I bring you to him. Wally stopped carving the wood and turned his focus to the conversation. So... He wants to give me to the mayor, asked Liza. I nodded. Liza leaned forward. Then let's pay him a visit. The straight-faced Willie looked to her, 
and gave the faintest of smiles. Liza had sent Willie to prepare and pulled me aside. Mason, what all do you know? About what? You only know about the mare and the Wendigo? Well, I also know I'm a Mundy. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the others. What others? I suppose you don't have the others on your mountain. At least not yet. What others? Liza looked me in the eyes. This country used to be mostly empty land. You know that, right? I nodded. People came in and built cities. Kept making them bigger and bigger. And what had previously roamed the land became confined to less and less space. Sounds like you're describing animals. Liza smiled. Well, them too. But I'm talking about the creatures of old. What creatures? You've heard about them. These are the legends of folklore, Mason. All those tales that you thought were just campfire stories? They're all true. They stay well hidden. But they're out there. And they want the land back. <laughs>